Hi, it's me, Vicky Marie. Ah, so, um, this video, as you know, if you watch my channel, I don't really like doing videos about children, about cases about children, because I do find it extremely upsetting. Um, but this case, one of my subscribers, one of the emails that I've received uh, and thank you for that very much uh, from someone who actually lives in Australia. And they mentioned to me, do you, do you know about this case? And William Tyrrell, I do know about the case because um, just from watching, I quite often watch 60 Minutes Australia. And there was a, you know, um, a program about it on there. I've watched, I've seen bits and pieces over the years. Uh, but what sort of decided me that I thought I would do a video on this is this is a case that is both historic but current because this is a case of little William Tyrrell, very similar, I think, to the Madeleine McCann case. Uh, bless him, this little boy, he was three years old and he disappeared. He just disappeared. Um, he was born on the 26th of June 2011, so... He just literally would uh, would have had a birthday. I mean, I think it's generally accepted that he's not alive, but it's not been proven. Um, and he was three years old. And he dis he was literally playing in his grandmother's garden. Uh, his mother and he, well, his foster mother and his foster grandmother were there. And he was playing in the garden in Kendall, New South Wales on the 12th of September, 2014. So it's nine years ago, isn't it? Coming up to 10 years. And a lot of people are familiar with this case because of the Spider-Man suit he was wearing, which I'm going to get a picture up for you to look at while I'm talking about him because we should, uh, you know, look at his picture and see him as a, a little person, not just a case, isn't it? Uh, so let me find a, a photo. I should have got this ready, but sorry. So yeah, it's a bit of a, a last minute sort of video. I decided to do it. Thought about it after she told me. And why I decided to do it is um, because there's been developments. So I think I wouldn't have covered it if it was just talking about what happened all those years ago and there's no fresh developments. Maybe eventually I would have talked about it, but um, you know, there's so many cases to talk about. But I thought it was interesting because, especially interesting because uh, it is current and there are developments. So let's have a look at little William. Um, and quite often he's known as the boy in the Spider-Man suit because this is apparently what he was wearing when he disappeared was this uh, Spider-Man suit, Spider-Man pyjamas. I'm not sure if they're pyjamas or a suit. Uh, these pictures, I don't know if they were actually taken on the day that he disappeared. But anyway, this was what he was wearing. So he'd insisted on wearing his Spider-Man uh, suit. They were all, they'd had breakfast, they were playing. Um, and what the parents say, and the, well, sorry, the foster mother and the uh, foster grandmother say happened was he was playing. He um, sort of ran around the corner doing a lion roar, his big lion roar that he liked to do. And then suddenly it went quiet. And when they went round to the front of that, to where he'd gone, he'd sort of just gone round to the front of the house. He disappeared. And there was no sign of him. So basically, this is what they say happened. Now, I can genuinely say, you know, normally being a, a bit of an opinionate, opinionated person, as I am, I do normally form opinions quite quickly as to what I think happen sometimes i'm proved wrong but to be honest normally i'm not but in this case i am genuinely not really quite sure there are times when i i think oh she's definitely she definitely knows something 
And there are times when I think, well, no, maybe he did just disappear. Anyway, after he disappeared, she phoned the police. We're going to listen to the emergency call in a moment. Um, and, you know, instantly, obviously, the police, with it being a little boy, the police were there looking. They were all searching. And no trace of it has ever been found of William. So over the years, I think it initially it was assumed um, that uh, he'd been kidnapped by, uh, you know, uh, 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 gosh, you never know what you can say do on um, YouTube, but by an SO, you know, that word that begins with P and ends with file. Um, and there were rumours of gangs and this, that and the other. Anyway, to cut very long story short, because I'm not going into all those uh, investigations, nothing came of them. So there were many, many investigations along those lines and nothing came out of them. But there's always been... Now, I'm not sure where this... Um, the specific uh, feeling that the police seem to have is that he actually died in an accident. An accident reminds me, it's very reminiscent of Madeleine McCann, isn't it? That uh, there was quite a big um, sort of a quite high up railing in this property. And um, the police seem to think, now I'm not sure why, I and mean, they must have a re so it's quite a specific thing that they think has happened that William fell off this balcony and died as a result of the accident. And what happened then is that his foster mother, who can't be named, she can't be named and she can't be seen. So we are going to look at some um, interviews with her, but we can't see her face. Uh, she covered up the death for some reason. So this is my first uh, sort of doubt, if you like, because you think, well, why? Why would you cover up? Now, she was a foster mother. Whether that would have affected, you know, any of the other children that she had in her care or, you know, what, what the re You know, people do things for a reason. There's always a reason. You know, that's what you have to look for, the motive, isn't it, in all any crime. There's a motive. It might be a ridiculous motive, uh, according to us, but it's still a motive. Everybody has a reason for the things that they do. So what the reason was, that if, if it's true, the foster mother did do, well, didn't do anything. Maybe she pushed him over there. Maybe it was temper or maybe he fell over or maybe he didn't and maybe he was kidnapped, as she insists. Uh, so, but the police are really now sort of concrete in this uh, feeling, um, and it's thought that within the next couple of days, well, basically, she has put a challenge out to the police, said, if you're going to prosecute me, prosecute me. If there's evidence, you know, show the evidence, arrest me. You know, she's literally thrown down the gauntlet really uh you know through her own legal team and i, I don't blame her for that because you would you'd be like well okay if you think i did it prove it wouldn't it be <laughs> it'd be like that you know innocent or guilty <clears throat> excuse me so with it any time within the next couple of days we that's the reason why i've decided to do this today because it, the news could come out literally tonight tomorrow I don't know if Australia, Australia's in front of us, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, it's on the verge of something's got to be decided, whether to actually prosecute this lady or not. You know, and I, I agree with that. It, it's wrong, really, to create suspicion around someone. Uh, this is the police stuff that's doing this. Um, you know, then if they've got the evidence, then they need to present it. Now, unfortunately, the grandmother, the foster grandmother, um, she has passed out from this world. She is no longer with us on this planet. So um, 
she can't sort of testify one way or the other. Now, I did watch an interview with her, and I'll see if I can find I find it. Well, it was when the police went to the home, the house, to do what they call a walkthrough, and they took the grandmother through the different rooms and asked her to explain what had happened. Um, I did notice one thing that she said was when she took them out onto the porch, and she said, "Oh, and this is where it happened." Uh, but what happened? Because they don't, supposedly, they don't know what happened. It was just him going off, roaring like a lion, going around the corner and then never being seen again. So uh, it did strike me a little bit strange that this is where it happened. What happened? But anyway, so let's start actually with the uh, emergency call. Now, we're going to look at the emergency call. I want you to tell me in the comments, if you don't mind, uh, what you think of this. It's, uh, to me, uh, I, well, again, I can't really make my mind up. It's quite, you know, it's definitely a case where I'm not 100% sure. Um, oh, this little boy's face looking at us. But anyway, we're going to, let me just make sure I think you can see that. And let me just check. Before I start playing, it's no point in me playing it. And then it turns out, yeah. So let's listen to the emergency call. It, no, 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 it says it. Maybe that must be the number in Australia. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, it's the call that the foster mother made about 10 to 15 minutes after William went missing. I think it's three and a half. Um, Please emergency, this is Simone. Yeah, hi, my son is missing. He's three and a half. Okay. Um, sorry. What's your address? Benaroon Drive, yep. Kendall. Okay, Benaroon Drive in Kendall. Yes. All right, I'm just going to bring that up on my map. It won't be a moment. Thank you. How long has he been missing? I th well, I think, well, we've been looking in for him now for about 15 or 20 minutes, but... Okay. I thought it could be five, it could be longer, because he was just playing around here. We heard him, and then we heard nothing. Okay. So I've got the nearest cross street it's, being Ellendale uh, Crescent, is that right? So what is it? Ellendale Crescent. I don't know. My, this is my mum's house. I, okay. Um, hang on. There's another lady out helping us look for him. I'll see if I can find her. But it's Benaroon, B E N. Yeah, yeah, I can see, I can see where you are. I'm just wondering, yeah. So it was, it's Benaroon Drive in Kendall, and I just thought I've got your nearest cross street as being Ellendale Crescent. It could be, I don't know. Okay, so he's been missing since about ten thirty. Yeah, I'd say so. Okay, can you describe him to me? How tall? Obviously not very tall. No, but he's, he'd, be, he... he'd be about two and a half feet. He's wearing a Spider-Man outfit. Yep. What kind um, of hair has he got? He's got um, dark, sandy-coloured hair. It's short, and he's got really big, uh, browny green coloured eyes. Okay. What do you get in each shoes on? Do you know any any other distinguishing features? Um, 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 he has... Oh, he's got a freckle on the top of his head when you part the hair on the left-hand side. Yep. You'll see a freckle on the top of his head. Okay. All right. Do you know where he might have gone? Um, we we actually live well. My property is near a state forest. Okay. And they're on huge blocks. We've walked up and down Benaroon Drive, and we can't find him. Okay. What's his name? William. What's William's surname? Uh, Tyrrell. T Y W -R, R E W -L, L. Okay. Has he been known to sort of go anywhere? No. This is the first time. The first so time completely out of off. character. There wasn't anyone um, suspicious in the area, any vehicles? No, 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 no. no. Okay. Well, not that, I'm, no, not that I'm aware of. We were just, I was out there talking with mum and my other daughter, so... Okay. And we heard him roaring around the garden, and then I thought, oh, I haven't heard him. I better go okay. check on him and okay. All right. find him. We'll send police to see you at Benaroon Drive in Kendall. Yes, we'll also please. get that, um, a message broadcasted to all the cars and people look out for him as well, yes, okay? Yes. Thanks all right. Much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay, so now, what did you think of that? Very calm, wasn't she? Very calm. I think if my son would have, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, I've probably said on other videos, 
I lost my son on the beach once, couldn't find him for about half an hour. I was absolutely frantic. Uh, just once in a department store as well. Uh, he, I mean, literally one minute I, um, he disappeared for. I was absolutely frantic. So, I don't know, she seems very calm to me. That's the only thing I'd say. I don't really get any... What What do you think? Or oh, let me know in comments, because I really am uh, not sure on this one, what I think. But his lovely little face, bless him. Now, what the police are thinking of charging her with, I just want to make it clear, is not murder. They're think, the charges that they're thinking of bringing against her are interfering with a corpse and perverting the course of justice because I think they're generally thinking it was an accident. Why they think there must be a reason why they're fixated on the fact that he fell over this uh, fell over this um, barrier, sort of. Why I don't know, but there's obviously a reason for that because at the end of the day. If they thought that she had done something to him, or even if they thought he had had an accident, it could have happened in many, many ways. So why do they think it was particular that he fell over, fell over the barrier? Um, let's see if I can find. So let's have a look at um, a video that talks that give you more of an idea of the actual area. Where's the video? I've got a video. Let's have a look at this one. Got a few videos lined up for us to look at. Alright, done that one. Um, I want the video that shows, yeah. I'm hoping on this one. Right, now, although that one's very interesting, it wasn't the one, I will be finding one, because I want to show you what it's like, how high up they think he's fallen from. Um, but also, I think you could see on there that you could see them searching through the forest. So this forest, woodland, all around. So it's a massive area to search, so that, that is, they are currently searching it. They've searched bits of it many times, so... You know, whether they've... It seems funny how it's sort of coming up again now. Uh, so for a long time, she wasn't suspected, not really. I mean, they may have had private suspicions, but for quite a long time, they investigated all these alleged child porno uh, pornography links and gangs and things. But all that came to nowhere, and I think they are more or less focusing on her now. And something that brought that up, I think, and made that happen was that last year, so let's see, that's, I had a video ready about that because, right, that one's gone. Uh, yeah, last year, right, this is going to show you the, um, the woodlands around again. About the house and surrounding gardens. Let's go back to the beginning here. So this will give you an idea of the actual location. But notice what this lady says at the beginning of this. First, a revealing insight into William Tyrrell's foster parents. Tonight, we hear from them in interviews recorded not long after William vanished. It comes as the couple was today charged with the common assault of a child. The child is not William Tyrrell, and there is no connection to William. Crime. 
yeah so i just want to tell you about that so i think this is what has brought this to the fore again as far as the parents are concerned or the mother because the father the foster father he wasn't there he arrived a little bit later but whether he knows about anything if anything has happened i don't know but this incident that this lady's talking about um this was an incident where another child now, whether it's another foster child or their own child, I don't know. Don't Again, we cut, we're not allowed to know the details because everything, all the names have to be secret. But another child, uh, they, they were charged with common assault on a child. So, again, not William. It's nothing to do with William. It's, but I will say it's nothing to do with him, but it's his foster parents charged with common assaults on another child and supposedly this common assault um concerned hitting them with a wooden spoon and kicking them in the thigh so there's been another incident there's been an incident i shouldn't say another because we don't know if there was an incident with the first one so this is what has really brought started off again all this focus so just to let you know that Okay, let's see what they go on to say. Redditor Simon Boda reports. I think there are words. It's like, it's the never ending nightmare. And then I drive really slow on more and I get to the riding school and I just think, it's not here. Yeah. She's now the prime person of interest in William Tyrrell's disappearance. And then I bring the car back up. So, so I just want to rewind that moment. So did you see that where he said, where they think he may have felt? I guess it's just all part of the big picture. Let's see. Wait. I thought it was the most important criteria. Oh. And I pulled, I, he, think, he thought I pulled over because he... During what's known as a walkthrough at the home where he was... Sorry. Out ...the prime person of interest in William Tyrrell's yeah. disappearance. So and see. then I bring the car back up and I just run out and I look. Drive really slow on more and I get to the riding school and I just think, it's not here. Yeah. She's now the prime person of interest in William Tyrrell. So I think it's from these sort of balconies that they're saying that he may have fallen from. Tyrrell's disappearance. And then I bring the car back up. And I just run out and I look for him again. We can't name her. We can't show you her face. She hasn't been arrested. She hasn't been charged. And she's still William's foster mother seven years after the little boy vanished. So when you look at as you can this see, footage like was so filmed right. soon after William. So did you see that? So you can see, gosh, I mean, there's the, the sort of house, I think, or the property um so there's a lot of woodland around it apparently you know he was running around here I and mean, you can see he could have run out quite easily you know how quickly toddlers can move <laughs> you know we talked about this before didn't we about reins how people don't use reins anymore because they decided they were dangerous but to be honest they're bloody brilliant with a toddler because toddlers move so quickly and it's just uh, a game to them isn't it and running away is a game and they actually think it's great, you know, to run away. And they could easily fall or they could easily, you know, get run over. Or So, um, it, you know, what she's saying, what she is saying that happened, it is plausible. It was filmed soon after William went missing during what's known as a walkthrough at the home where he was last seen alive. Like semi trailer coming. Well, you can see it's all woods and trees, isn't it? So it'd be very easy for somebody to hide. Uh, it's just they heard nothing, you know, nothing. But they said they heard him do this roar uh, because he was playing lions, and then nothing, nothing, not a car, you know, they're not saying they heard a car pull up or him scream or anybody, nothing. And they weren't far away, but they were probably distracted down really fast and mm. I pulled I, he think he thought I pulled over because he acknowledged me by saying thanks for pulling mm -hmm. over but I pulled over because I've just got my head out the window looking for William mm. I saw her on the phone 
-hmm. And I think she's. I think she said, "Should I call the police?" I said, "Us a call place." So where are you? Williams' foster dad was also asked to give his account of what happened that day. Checked under, you know, uh, under houses. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to check the, the most, what I thought was the most important criteria. You know, I know this has all been done as well because mm -hmm. I did this with the SES. He never wanders. Yes, I. He he's not yeah. a wanderer. So they say he's not a wanderer. Hmm. I think all toddlers are wanderers, really, aren't they? I, I remember when I was a kid, I had a friend called Rhonda, and my dad actually used to call her Rhonda the Wanderer because he said whenever I went round to call for her, I, he came and found us once. We were in a field of cows, I remember, like terrified, and then it was like my dad was like the cavalry coming to find us. I mean, we were really young. You know, those were the days when... You know, kids did go off on their own, didn't they? And play God, I was probably only about seven or something. But yeah, this friend, Rhonda the Wanderer, my dad called her because uh, he reckoned that whenever I was with her, we always used to end up going off somewhere. Yeah, he's not like, you know, doesn't do it. Right. And so then when you follow this, mm -hmm. uh, I, I had then gone through, I'd gone through these fences yep. and continued. Looking everywhere I possibly could, I had then said to, I said, "Well, where is he? Where, 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 where's he gone?" She said, "He was, he was here five minutes ago. Here five minutes ago." It's all sitting down. Oh, so this is the property. This is so. What the grandma said when the video I was watching earlier, she said that you see these steps coming out here. He ran down these steps and ran round the corner. Yep. All right. I said, well, "Where's he gone?" She said, I can't find him. Now, as Police Commissioner Mick Fuller admitted, the strike force is focusing on one suspect. The couple is seeking legal advice. Today, meeting with a lawyer. She's, she's calling out for him. She's looking down that side. I can see that she's distressed as well. We need to know. In April 2015, they made this emotional public appeal for help in finding little William. Well, when I realised that William was missing, I just, I, I'm... I mean, I, I think back to that, that moment where I just went, I can't hear him. Why, why, why can't I hear him? And I walked around. See, I think some of that might be true because, you know, maybe that she did think that she could hear him. And then if he went over the edge of the um, balcony or whatever it was that they, they seemed to think that happened, and, you know, she she probably would be thinking, hmm, hang on a minute, I can't hear him. Why can't I hear him? Walked around, you know, that it could be true. Uh, but but in a, if you see what I'm saying, so maybe as he went, when he went over the balcony, she just thought, oh, why can't I hear him anymore? Uh, so this may well be true, but just a different um, scenario. Seriously, it was just two metres three metres away from where we were sitting. And I've just walked out and I just see nothing. I, I see nothing. I hear nothing. I, I'm speechless. I'm walking around in a circle on the spot thinking, where is he? Why can't I see him? Mm. And I'm yelling out, William, where are you? You need to talk to mummy. Tell me where you are. I can't see you. I can't hear you. Where, where are you? The couple detailed what they did that September... Yeah, so do you, what do you think? I mean, and that was a couple of years later, but she's still she's very calm and collected. I, I, you know, maybe it's something wrong with me that I get too emotional about things. I would be more emotional about him. I feel more emotional than she is in that interview, and I don't even, you know, I didn't even know William, you know, so I don't... Uh, but yeah, everybody's different, so we do have to be aware of that. I'm not, I'm not saying that I believe, I don't believe her. I, I, I really do feel sort of in this watching it that uh, that uh, I do, really do feel that it could be one way or the other for me. But the the biggest red flag for me is the lack of emotion, as always. Even and when he first went missing and she phoned the uh, police operator she was so calm and the thing is if you think some your um child has 
been taken by someone that is really terrifying because you just don't know what's happening to them at that very moment that you're speaking anything could be happening to them it'd be a comfort in the end to when the body is found to know that they weren't in any you know and if you knew that you know if the forensic report came back that um they died shortly after disappearing that would be a comfort in the end because the thought of them being maybe sort of days, weeks, months, even years being abused, it, I, I think that's just unbearable to try and live with. I don't see how you could live with it without, you know, drugs or drink or you just have to numb your brain because that would keep cr that image of your child being hurt in some way would just crowd into your mind over and over again. But she's very calm, but you know. There you go. People say, oh, some people don't show emotion. Maybe she's from the north of England. Anyway, sorry, I'm just re referring back to stupid things that people said about uh, Paul Ansel. The morning in 2014. In that morning, before he went missing, I put him into a tree because mum's got some great climbing trees. He was in it, but he was like, oh, mummy, too high, get me down. So, and I said to him, that's quite telling, isn't it? So why do they think he fell off the um, balcony when that really, what just what she's saying there, I put him in a tree. I put him in a tree and he said, oh, it's too high, mummy. Maybe he fell out of that tree, hey? Yeah, why don't you try? And he said, no, mummy, too high, get me down. So I got him down. So he wouldn't be in a tree. It's not in him. I mean, he, he wouldn't, he's not a wanderer. He would not even cross a street no. by himself. No. He wouldn't, he wouldn't go far. His foster mum even recalling a conversation she had with William about his beloved Spider-Man suit. I remember the discussion I had with William about putting on his Spider-Man clothes because I wanted him to wear a singlet. He didn't want to wear a singlet, so the compromise was he'd wear a Spider-Man T-shirt underneath his Spider-Man clothes, so he was spider man out completely. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, let me know what you think. Let me know. I need some feedback on this. The information the couple provided is being heavily scrutinised by Strike Force investigators. Last night, police using blood-detecting chemical agents searched around the Kendall home looking for any evidence. One theory is that William may have fallen from the balcony onto the garden bed below. Strike Force detectives have also seized a car which was owned at the time by William's foster grandmother. It's now being forensically pulled apart and checked for clues. Early today... Yeah, so the grandmother, she has passed on uh, unfortunately, so she can't throw any light on this situation. But yeah, they're saying that they're taking her car. Hmm. Australian Federal Police Specialists arrived at the Kendall property to help map out the house and surrounding gardens to assist in the search process. About a kilometre away, Federal agents used ground penetrating radar in bushland, which is also being carefully searched for William's remains a search which is tipped to last weeks. You can't walk a mile in our shoes unless you've actually, it's actually happened. Yep. And I don't think any parent anywhere deserves to walk a mile in our shoes. Yes, Simon Boda joins me from Kendall now. Simon, there have been reports that detectives found something in the bushes today. What was that? Oh, when is this? No, so this was 2021, well, I, can tell you that I think. They found what yes. I believe to be a couple of pieces of material. They found them over a period yeah, of about is, an hour. I'm not they the new. A um, lot of this was a couple of years ago, so I, I don't know if they did find anything, if it was significant, but I'm sure if it was that significant, uh, what they're going to do, they would have done by now, surely, wouldn't they? Um, but anyway, it's interesting, isn't it? So we'll know the reason that I decided to do this today is because, as I say, although this is uh, quite an old case uh, in the sense that it's over nine years old, but that little boy, so he'd be about 12 now, wouldn't he? He'd be 12 years old, bless him. Um, 
I, th I think it's been brought into the view again because of this assault on the other child, on another child, which sounds to me is probably another child in their care. So that's what sort of reflected all the attention back on again. So it's interesting to see what will the police do? What will the police do? Um, let's see, we've got any other information here. So basically, let me just revise the case for you. On the 11th of September 2014, three-year-old William Tyrrell, his foster parents and his five-year-old sister travel four hours from Sydney to visit his foster grandmother in Kendall. And her house is on Benaroon Bener Drive, directly across a bush road from the Kendall State Forest about 35 kilometres south of Port Macquarie. So it's on 27th of June, which is was last week, wasn't it? 27, oh, the day after Nicola's inquest, because that was the 26th. Police recommended charges against Tyrell's foster mother for perverting the course of justice and interfering with a corpse. And this is what we're waiting to hear now. Will the actual Crown Prosecution uh, Service find that there is enough evidence to make these charges or will they turn around and say, no, there's not enough evidence? And that's what we'll be finding out. So it says between 10 and 25 a.m. on the 12th of September, Tyrell and his sister were playing hide and seek in the front and backyard while his foster mother and foster grandmother were sitting outside watching them. His foster mother went inside to make a cup of tea. She became worried after she had not heard from him for five minutes and began searching the yard and the house. And she did say he was imitating a tiger's roar. Her last memory was that he was imitating a tiger's roar while running towards the side of the home. Then there was silence and he had disappeared. She looked for him, but without success. So basically, that that is uh, there is a million dollar or there was a million dollar reward put out for an, any information, but that's never been sort of claimed. Well, let's see. Was there anything else that I? Uh, I have, we've listened to the audio. We've watched that. Uh, that yeah, that's just really yeah. So, what do we think? Let me know in comments. Um, we'll see, and I'll keep you updated. Any information that comes through over the next couple of days, I will keep you updated. As always, thanks for being here with me. Uh, remember, you can always, if you, if you, to support my channel, the best thing you can do. It's give me a thumbs up. Give the videos a thumbs up and subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, uh, please consider doing that because that really helps me out and they're completely free ways you can help support my channel. If you want to go a little bit further, you can join. You can become a member for one euro ninety nine a month and you can cancel that at any time. Um, what are the other ways? So there's super chat, super stickers, super thanks. And of course, you can always buy me a Kofi or a coffee on Kofi.com. Um, yeah, and remember, if you want to learn Spanish, uh, I do also teach Spanish. My books are available on Amazon, Break the Language Barrier, Levels 1 to 5, Vicky Riley, Vicky with an I. I think that's all I've got to say. I'm doing a live later on today. So if you're watching this video today on Sunday, the 2nd of July, tonight at 7 Spanish time, 6 UK time. I'm not sure about times in the rest of the world. Um, I'm doing my serial killer Sunday. And I'll be talking about a Canadian. Well, he actually is not Canadian. He's British, unfortunately. Uh, but the case was from Canada. He moved to Canada and he lived in Canada. And that is Russell Williams, the very, very kinky colonel who, who was like a, 
you know, a paragon of virtue. He was like one of these people that's reached the pinnacle of his profession, the pilot in the Canadian Air Force. He even flew the Queen, our Queen. And I don't mean Camilla because, sorry, she'll never be the Queen as far as I'm concerned. I mean the Queen, uh, Queen Elizabeth um actually was trusted enough to fly her that's how special he was that's how trusted he was it turns out he was a murderer serial rapist a voyeur and he liked dressing up in women's underwear um that he'd stolen from victims and taking photos of it so just shows you never know what's going on behind closed doors and you never know even the paragon of virtue that you think is you know beyond reproach uh quite often they can be the the very ones that you have to look out for so i'll be talking about him russell and the other interesting thing about russell williams's case is his interrogation where he finally ended up confessing to the murders of two women um is just the 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 detective who's in uh, who's interrogating him is absolutely brilliant. His interrogation is brilliant, and it is held up as uh, uh, an example of how uh, so many things were learnt from that interview. He, you know, Russell. He, he had no intentions of confessing. He started off that inter interrogation cocky as you like thinking he's untouchable because of his respected position and then he ended up confessing to these murders and rapes etc uh and the the detective uh i think it was jim smythe um he was just brilliant so we're going to be looking at that and if you're interested in psychology as i am uh fascinating the the things um the techniques that he used to break Russell down very gradually, combined with evidence. So, so what he did, he combined the bits of evidence because what Russell didn't know, and I'm sort of, I'm not spoiling that, I'm just giving you a taste there. What Russell didn't realise is that the, as he was being interviewed, they were searching his house as well and doing that. So every now and again, um, Jim would come back in with another little nugget of information and Russell, you see him just deflate. It is absolutely fascinating. I won't be playing the whole interview because it's very, very long, but uh, you can find the, the whole interview. I'll just be playing some of the salient points that uh, are important, I think. It's all important, though, really. It's quite difficult not to. I could just leave the whole video on, but I won't do that. I could commentate on it, I suppose. Anyway, do you know what? Am I waffling just for a change? Sorry, I'm waffling. Remember to always live and love very wisely. Look after yourself, of course, because you are the most important person. Because if you don't look after yourself, you can't look after anyone else. And until I see you again, may your God go with you. Thank you so much. <clears throat>